Oh, here we are. We're back in Los Angeles. Yep. Forgot oh. to put on my New Year's baby outfit for the podcast, but yeah, whatever. Next That's year. Fine. How many pacifiers did you suck on this break? Uh, pretty much raving every day, so quite a few. <laughs> All of them? Just nothing but Vicks vapor rub and yeah, pacifiers. Yeah, and uh, just people blowing Vicks in my face. Yeah. Getting blown up with gloving. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't go to any raves. What the fuck you guys are talking about? You've really never know. been to a rave, Matt? Never been to a rave. Oh. Never want to go to a rave. Well. You've never uh, uh, shot ketamine into your ass and partied hard at a rave? I have, I have watched the movie Hackers. Isn't that... That's sort of like much. it. That's like every cyberpunk. Rave, every rave I've ever been to uh, is inside of a skate park that's covered in graffiti, and everyone only uses rollerblades to get around while yeah, the DJ plays. sounds awful. I'm so glad I never went to a rave. Okay. How, did you go to SpaceX on your break? No. Did you, did you get the hoodie? This is, this is a, this this is a Kickstarter? Chris, this is a Christmas gift from my girlfriend. Oh, that's cute. Um, I really wanted one, and she remembered. Try to trick people into thinking you're an astronaut? Yes. Uh, I wish. You're no, one of those I guys actually... that's, uh, that volunteered to go to Mars. Yeah. I would. Stolen valor. I would. Uh, we Your live... girlfriend must love that. What? You really want to get away from me that bad that you volunteered <laughs> to go to Mars? No, I would love to go to Mars. Mars is cool. You, know, you saw the Martian, though. You see how yeah. well that turned out. I mean, you the, Ares, be... the, the Ares program sounds like an amazing program to me. You can have grow tomatoes out of your own shit? Uh, he didn't grow tomatoes, he grew potatoes. Whatever. Yeah, sounds um, like a bad idea. Did you get to the part in Fallout where they grow tomatoes out of human shit yet? No. It's good. Where is that? Is that which kind of mission It's is like that? on one of the very tips of the map. Some yeah. farm out there at a I, water treatment plant. I Yesterday I said I'd played 40 hours. I got home yesterday and I checked my uh, Steam account. It was actually 97 hours. No oh way. God. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah. No, I could see that. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, well, that. we just answered the question I mean, of how I, you spent your holiday I break. pretty much just Fallout 4. Yeah. And not a whole lot. I mean, it wasn't just Fallout 4. Because I've been playing for weeks, and I'm at, like, 44 well, hours. Well, like, during break, especially when the weather would suck, I would just, like, yeah, eat breakfast, do some stuff around the house, and then, like, you know, I'll play a couple hours of Fallout. And then that yeah. would turn into, like, eight hours of Fallout. Yeah. It, well, you're easy. it's easy to get, like, caught into that oh yeah there's always there's always one more quest yeah, there's always another settlement that needs saving yeah uh but so that is that what you did i guess we're, we're going to talk now about what we did on holiday break is sure that what you did? uh did that and and drank a lot yeah <laughs> so yeah fallout and booze and watching netflix my mom like always that. had a shot of whiskey ready like when i would wake up in the morning there'd be a shot of whiskey on oh, the wow. kitchen counter well, that's like, ready to go. really is that yeah. just her normal routine i don't know anymore because I never, I, yeah, no, they get they they fill the fridge with pickles. Uh, <laughs> well, that's very considerate. <laughs> yeah, because I love pickles. And what else? There is like some other shit that they got me that I knew that they or they knew I would like, and then uh, a gigantic bottle of whiskey. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you on the fact that I was pretty much not sober the entire time. Yeah, I I was hungover for two days straight on. Christmas Day and the day after. Mm-hmm. It was kind of bad. I got sick. That was terrible. I, well, I didn't get sick. I, I got, didn't like I got like sick. ill <laughs> from yeah. drinking. You know, I had a, like a upper respiratory infection or something. Oh, see, I was sick like right before we got off break for mm. Christmas, which yeah. didn't help at all because it slowed me down in getting shit done. And uh, well, what would you get for Christmas? Uh, I got, or whatever it is. I celebrate <laughs> Christmas. Um, <laughs> I got a uh, suitcase, a bigger, oh. a larger suitcase for longer trips. Because oh, the one I have is is only good for like four days, roughly. Well, it's a good, it's good, it's a good present because they're very expensive. Yeah, I mean, like it's not a super nice one. I don't know where my parents bought it from, but I think it was like Louis Tar- Vuitton, Target, or something like that. But it is, it's a good practical. It's gift. large yeah. and durable, and it was something I needed anyway. So yeah. yeah, sounds great. Good to have. What did you do, Maddie? Um, I this first year I did not go back home to Hawaii. Well, because your Christmas. mom moved here, right? My mom moved here. Uh, a lot of family here. My girlfriend's family's from here, so stayed here for the first time. And I gotta say, it was fucking amazing. I know. Like, I regret not mine. traveling. Oh yeah. It, I mean, I, I can't obviously I can't complain about going to Hawaii every year. Like yeah. I'm not gonna be that guy who does that. Hawaii's amazing. I love going home, especially at Christmas time because it's like weather's perfect in Hawaii. Um, you, you see everyone. Usually, everyone's back home for Christmas. I hate um, seeing people. I the one thing I <laughs> did this break is I saw no one except mm. for like I saw my old film teacher, but I saw no old friends yeah. really, and it was so. How'd you I feel like every that? year you see less people. Just didn't text anyone. I saw like oh, one wow. friend that I, uh, you know, that I see every time, 
And that's it. I didn't even make my uh, appearance in Florida well known on Facebook or anything. Yeah, I didn't see that many friends. I'm the only like I went bowling for like seven hours straight at a bowling. You do alley. everything <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Seven hours at straight. Like, yeah, because there's how like, many games of bowling is that? It's like four lot. games. Yeah. But is this place? My parents live like a block away from a mall, and uh, they have this pretty cool like bowling alley arcade place there now okay. and uh yeah we would just keep buying games keep getting pictures everything everything bowling. was expensive except for like bud light it was like oh, uh, yeah nine dollars a pitcher so we no, just that keep was, that uh, coming that was the great thing about being home in florida was that everything was infinitely cheaper oh yeah but we were we were there would be like three days in a row we'd be like we haven't eaten anything that isn't fried because yeah. every place is just like fried food it was very funny because there's this like local place called Geckos there, and it's like kind of like a it's one step above Applebee's and Hooters, <laughs> and it was so, so funny. So it's because, still not pretty high. No, no, no but like that's the thing is like it's this like lower step. local chain, but it is a chain. And anytime I would actually want to meet up with someone, like I met up with my teacher, I met up with uh, John Rogers from NBC Channel Eight. Oh, the I guy. Met, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I met up with uh, some other people, but it was it was they were. I was like, listen, you live here. Where should we go eat? Every geckos, single baby. time without fail, it was geckos, mm. but a different geckos location some of the times. And there was one where I went to it twice in a row because it was like, yeah, let's go to the geckos over on uh, Hillview. And I'm like, all right. And then by, by the time it, uh, the trip was almost over, every time I would talk to Dana, I'd be like, how much do you want to bet that this guy's going to want to meet us at geckos? She's like, meh, meh, meh. boom, geckos. Yeah, it's like a friend of mine in Orange County like pretty much exclusively eats at BJ's. Just love oh, the BJ's. brew house. Can't I mean, go it's wrong. a BJ's decent, it's a good BJ's restaurant. Pretty good. But like me and the rest of our friends would just get sick of it. We're just like, no, we're not going to fucking BJ's this yeah. time. We're going <laughs> yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Be some pizza at BJ's. Yeah, no, and, it's it's a fine restaurant. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. I did get to go to uh, Cigar City Brewing when I was home, and I oh, finally yeah? tried the Florida Man. How is it? The Florida Man was delicious. You should have brought some of that. Back. You can't. You can't. I, even you can't even buy it. They sell out with, uh, of it in like three hours when they oh, put it wow. on sale. It's like the Pliny the Elder of oh. <laughs> Florida, and it has the guy on the front, the mug shot. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was. So uh, do they only have it on draft? They had it on draft there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Do they do they offer growlers of it? Uh, I don't think so. I didn't ask. Yeah, a lot of these places with their like limited run batches, like you can't even buy it in a growler. They're like, no, you drink it here, or you're not drinking it at all. <laughs> I got a T-shirt. I should have wore it today. But yeah, <laughs> the Florida man. I survived no, drinking no, no, the Florida no, man. The, uh, it's just a Cigar City shirt, uh, but that is the uh, it's like the best brewery there. Although yeah. I had like a, a conversation with one of my, one of my friends that uh, used to work at a bar there that I saw out at another bar. I was like, hey, how's it going? How you been? Uh, just like randomly um, ran into. And he was like, oh, I'm working for Anheuser-Busch now. And he was telling me how many craft breweries, like... Oh, they're aggressively uh, buying insane. them up right like, now. Like, yeah, yeah, even uh, Ballast Point down in San Diego sold to Corona. He was like telling me all this stuff. I was what? like, what? What? Like stuff that Ballast I didn't even... Ballast Point sold? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Nothing they... is sacred. I got to give him credit. They do a great job of hiding this information. Exactly, like, yeah. And, and, and a little bit off topic, but... Uh, like the fact that InBev and uh, Sab Miller mm-hmm. are about to merge into one company is fucking insane. Yeah, it's the there's, biggest monopoly. There's <laughs> never been a global monopoly on anything yeah. as big as what that will be. And like, there's really nothing that anyone can do to stop it. It's they'll control like 90 percent of all beer and soft drink sales the in the world. Only reason that this is good, and it's the only reason, is that. I've never seen so many California, Colorado, Washington, and Oregon beers available in Florida ever than the time that I went this time. I could get a Ballast Point Sculpin like anywhere. Really? Yeah, anywhere. So that's the only good thing is like- Is it all just still brewed in San Diego though? I know. I think they give their recipes to the distribution plants. Yeah, see, like a, a lot of I, I've never encountered this problem, but a lot of beer purists are like, yeah, this, this is not the same. Like. I don't know. It's very strange, but yeah, I was like blown away by how many he was. He named a bunch more, but yeah, I think like you know, Russian River is still good, and he was saying Cigar City is still holding out. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of them that actually uh, have formed like alliances. Mm-hmm. There's uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of breweries that are like kind of in the same geographical locations have formed like brewing alliances where they're like, all right, I'll watch out for you, you watch out for me. If <laughs> I ever if I ever get in like bankruptcy or whatever, you'll take care of me. Like a but, union, uh, Elliot? Kind of. 
I think there is one that's called like the Union of Brewers or yeah, something. Yeah, probably. Like that. I, would, I didn't I see that. Yeah. A, there was a Vice documentary on that. It was. Uh, it, I think they're East Coast based, and there's one guy like bought like uh, he made like a brewery, and then a bunch of microbrewers use his brewery. Mm. Yeah, to, like they sublease. To run it out because well, yeah. most of them brewery. don't have the resources to do bottling and canning themselves. Mm-hmm. So like Golden Road was actually. Golden Road, which is an LA brewery, they were recently bought by Anheuser, uh, yeah, InBev, yeah. Uh, like they, most of their, or a big chunk of their income has been uh, doing canning operations for smaller breweries in California mm-hmm. that don't have their own canning. It was funny because that brewery specifically was like a fast forward version of a lot of craft breweries in the country because they they well, kind they of set existed. Out- yeah, from but, the outset, the Tony guy, the, yeah, he he wanted to sell. And it, well, the thing was, is their old slogan was like, "We won't ship beer farther than a tank of gas." And within a year, they sold to the well, biggest distributor. Of- gas has gotten very efficient <laughs> since they made that statement yeah. the first time. They, they were talking about the uh, the uh, electric cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll go forever. A tank of seven forty seven gas <laughs> can go pretty far. Yeah. Uh well beer talk anyway so what you what you do beer after cast. after that Maddie I did not drink as much beer as you guys mm. um that's why I'm not drinking yeah, I'm I not didn't drinking do, in January I didn't yeah. do any I watched a, a lot of movies um caught up on a lot of uh, watched like Sicario which mm-hmm. was, nice. I in theaters was incredible um watched a lot of documentaries watched I think we're gonna get into making a murder yeah, yeah, soon as a question about oh, that boy. um and uh, had a good just a good time relaxing cooked dinner every night. You know, it was great. I great didn't Christmas cook break. a damn thing. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't lift a finger for myself. Oh, my dad <laughs> made so much good like meat, just straight up smoked meat. It was great. Plus, the, there is good barbecue in Florida, so I liked that. Yeah. Uh, the most exciting thing I did was I went airboating yeah, in that's cool. on a on a river, Peace River in Florida. We went airboating. That was great. Uh, but aside from that, like the highlights were seeing Hateful Eight, the road show, seventy millimeter yeah. one. That was amazing, and. Uh, Oh, so we, uh, well, I don't know if I should get, get into that now. I guess, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, our, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the New Year's celebration that I witnessed in Florida was like the most unique thing ever because I'm so used to. Oh, the to, pineapple drop? Yeah. So I'm so used to like g- either going to a huge concert or going to like a like a nice club or something like that. But something yeah. always usually in LA mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, spare no expense. We're, we're doing a huge thing. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the building is. Like confetti shooting everywhere and blah blah blah, and this is the first time where I, you know, I'd gone to like since I was a kid, like the town square mm. with the whole community gathered together and like ever there was drinking, you could just drink on the streets, and they dropped a pineapple from a crane, and uh, like <laughs> that's all just like that's the Florida version of the New yeah. York yeah crystal wait, ball. Wait, just like a like a typical pineapple no, no, or no, it was like a ma- it was oh, oh okay yeah and i actually posted on twitter and a lot of people were saying that their own, that their, their, <laughs> own, their own hometowns did different variations of it like someone was saying that uh one of their towns had a giant uh tortilla chip that would slowly lower into a thing of uh queso dip that's genius and then uh, oh, there was wow. one that was like uh like a giant pecan that would so i guess it's like these places do. New this. York ain't the only town dropping <laughs> objects at the but stroke of midnight. But you would imagine that Florida's would be an orange and that Hawaii's would be a pineapple. Yeah, our pine. Do they grow mm. a lot of pineapples there? I don't know. I don't think so. Ugh, oh, shut up, go. Samsung. Uh, but it was very funny because it was like the most eclectic mix of, uh, like, uh, just classes of people, like upper, middle, lower class. There yeah. was there was fights every of ten or fifteen oh, nice. minutes. There was uh, people that had reserved VIP areas that were just getting, like, mowed over by, like, crowds. It was uh, very entertaining to watch. But uh, I, I I said to you guys, I think, and I, I said this to my girlfriend, I was like, when I got back, I love seeing my parents, love them. But the day I got back to L.A., which was just, like, four days ago uh, when we were recording this, so it was Friday, was, like, I felt the day that my vacation actually started uh-huh. because I actually just sit back and relax. Yeah. It was... So I kind of like yeah. squandered it's kinda it. It's kind of priceless. It's a very valuable time just to like you know, like, decompress I, my and do nothing. My goal pretty much like because I, I ended up working like finishing Creepy Text Theater and then Worst People 2015. Like I wasn't done with work until like Christmas Eve in yeah. the morning. Yeah. And then I was just like 
all right, I'm not lifting a goddamn finger for yeah. anything. I was just like, it was the laziest week and a half of my life. And it was like perfect motivation because like on Sunday night, I was like, oh, I'm like actually pretty excited to go back to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I was, you could tell like I think in the yesterday's videos, uh, Tech Tuesday and the All first that daily, energy. Yeah, they were like, just uh, like, man, we missed coming over here and talking shit about stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was so excited. I was like, I can't wait to get back to work. This is great. Yeah. I, you know. A, a, a the good reasonable, parts of work. Yeah, yeah. Go, get there back was to a work lot and of, work a normal eight-hour day. <laughs> well, there, there was a lot of, uh, well, yeah, we, we were working like crazy hours leading up to it, but also there was a lot of fucking bullshit we came back to that oh, yeah. what isn't controlled by us, but that's all stuff that you guys don't see, so that's fine. It's fine. We came back and, and we started doing videos. It's fun. <laughs> I have a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. So, so that's uh, good. What did you guys What did you do for Chris or for New Year's Eve? Oh, okay. So yeah, this this year, uh, like I've never felt more like old. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't really like come up with any sort of like plan for New Year's. I was just like, ah, something will come together. I'm not gonna really worry too much about it. You know, I'll either like go to a bar nearby or like if a party comes up, whatever. I'm not gonna put any investment in it because it's not a real holiday at all. Uh, but I so some would argue it's the only real holiday. Well, uh, it's, you know, we got our calendar. The Chinese got their calendar. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of calendars. A lot of calendar. New Year's out there. Uh, I ended up going to uh, a pretty, like, trendy hotel in Koreatown t- called The Line Hotel. Oh, The Line Hotel's great. Yeah. Uh, and it they was have a nice. great bar. Yeah, it was nice. Um, but, like, I was just not feeling it. Like, all the, like, lines and shit. It t- it... <laughs> it's called The Line so Hotel. I, yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, I was, like... It was a total like club atmosphere. Everyone's dressed up, DJ playing, lights, everything. Very big like New Year's Eve atmosphere, uh, and it's like it's like eleven forty five, and I'm like, I'm gonna go get a drink, so I have a drink in my hand when the countdown to midnight happens. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. And the countdown happened while I still had like three people in front of me in line uh, at the fucking bar. Yeah, I was just like. Yeah, I think I was. I'd never had like I never actually like timed how long I'd like been in line at a bar. I was like, "Holy shit! I've been in this line for 15 minutes." I don't know. Let's the, the get New the York, fuck out of here. The New York Comic Con bar line that one night. Oh at my the, god, uh, that was insane. That was they had like one bartender working with like 700 it, people. It was there. the wow. same thing at this party where I, like I I've never worked in bartending, so maybe I'm just blissfully unaware of how things work but I've been to so many bars and events and stuff where I'm just like get literally one more bartender <laughs> one more bar back back there and you will just make so much more money yeah because mm-hmm. like right now and it literally d- it drove me to leave like I'm at once at midnight hit I'm like all right let's go to like this little bar down the street from my apartment that I'm positive will not be full at all <laughs> yeah where I can get like a five dollar beer and just like Enjoy silence yeah. and some jazz music. And that's what I did. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I don't know. New Year's, not great. I think in the future, I'll probably just, like, have people over at my apartment or something Yeah, like it's, that. it's a lot easier to just keep it calm. And yeah. Like, next year I was saying, I was like, I don't want to go anywhere. And if we do, I want to go somewhere that isn't anywhere near, like, relatives or families. Like, something like just go sit in a hotel somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like... Like, I mean, I don't live that far from Koreatown, but even, like, getting a, an Uber was took forever, and it was, like, three times the pricing. And, it's a mess. And also, like, a lot of people treat days like New Year's Eve as just an excuse to be... Like, <laughs> the analogy I came up with on New Year's Eve was that New Year's Eve is the Las Vegas of holidays mm. because it just... Fucking otherwise normal people just take it as <laughs> an excuse to like dress up real nice, dress up really high class, and just act like fucking low class pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, it's New Year's Eve, so I got a free pass to just get blind drunk and just Probably treat s- people like shit. Yeah. Probably the same people that have like thirty things on their New Year's re- New Year's resolutions. You oh know? yeah, yeah. Like, no, they're like, my <laughs> my slate is wiped clean yeah, at midnight, really so I'm like... gonna really cram the oh, yeah, worst yeah. parts of my life. You know, into that, yeah. that makes hours. sense actually. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like getting a free pass, and the, as soon as midnight hits, it's like, oh, literally everything I just did doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And yeah everyone by now has probably seen that bouncer video where he strapped a GoPro. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah. In- incredibly eye-opening. Yeah, I don't know. Like, my, my tolerance for, like, grown-ass adults being 
like shitty drunk is just non-existent now. I, yeah. I, <laughs> Especially when I, the people, these people are younger than you now too. Oh, yeah. Seeing like, well, that you know. it's worse when they're older than me. I got in like a, <laughs> I got in a fucking pretty tense argument with some dude at a hockey game the day after uh, Thanksgiving down in Orange County because there's uh, there's an Anaheim Ducks game, but I was sitting. It was the Chicago Blackhawks. There's a lot of Chicago people in uh, Orange County, so anytime there's an away game with a big city like that. It's pretty much half and half with fans, which kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's like a big group of like Chicago fans, like just harassing this one old man, like sitting by himself in like duck scare. <laughs> I was just like, leave the dude alone. What the fuck is wrong with you? And it just escalated into this really awkward argument. And then they I was were just, like, hey, are you Elliot from ATC? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking, the game is been going for five minutes and you're already just like shit faced yeah just stop it it makes everything so much worse yeah the, the alcohol content grown ass yeah. adults getting drunk like college students oh, just man. pisses me off yeah take yeah. that drunk ass adults but do you, do you do anything for new year's like new year's wasn't significant to me because it was just like every other night yeah. during my break i was just that's, making that's, dinner yeah, that's the best and way watching to movies I, yeah. yeah i don't remember i would have been happier just, just doing that no yeah. yeah it's the the fear of missing out no it's, that's exactly what yeah. it is cuz like, i was people don't want to stay in cuz they're like i'm missing something crazy right yeah. now yeah yeah no, I, 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 yeah i completely that cut crept that up off. on me like a lot at the end i was just like fuck i was like texting people was like well, what's going on what's going on what's going on I'm like all right finally yeah let's go to a hotel that'd be awesome no giant pain in the ass mm-hmm. <laughs> just lines and lines and lines at the line hotel you know what's nice though uh, if you ever get stuck uh, somewhere like LA Live waiting for a movie or waiting for a, a game to start, all those restaurants you can't even get into because the lines are so long and the bars are completely filled up, can't even get a drink, go to that Marriott Hotel. It's like a super nice hotel, the one that's like right there. No line for the bar. The prices mm. are exactly the same as the overpriced, stupid restaurants. Oh, next wow. Door. Yeah. It's a great tip. No one's ever there. Pro tip. If you're pro, ever visiting pro, L.A. Pro tip for the locals in L.A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to locals the Marriott <laughs> downtown L.A. Get a drink. It's expensive. We, we should do a locals only podcast yeah, where yeah, we can yeah. bring all these locals yeah. only subjects into. Talk about our favorite yeah. shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the big gas prices at? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Where's that Arco in the Korean uh, town God. that you go to? All right. Let's get into the biggest media uh, extravaganza as far as content goes while we were gone, and that's the fact that Making a Murderer yeah. came out. Yeah, it's 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 the jinx and the serial mix of this year. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it has more to do with serial than Yeah, someone asked jinx, me if they were like, but... is this as good as the jinx? And I said, it's the opposite. It's, it is, it is yeah. like the antithesis of the yeah. jinx, and that like the jinx is, I mean, just like for, as a thesis, sta- thesis statement, the jinx is like if you're rich, and white, you can get away with anything. Yeah. And and uh, making a murderer. If you're poor and <laughs> and not sophisticated, you can keep, anything can be yeah, put upon you. And you, you live you. in a small like. Yeah. It basically like the whole. Well, when you're being judged by a, a like a jury of your peers from a county that, that that's that small, mm-hmm. everyone knows everyone, and yeah. it's not going to be fair. First of all. Yeah. So. I'll, if you're not familiar with it, the premise of the show is there's this guy, Stephen Avery, got arrested at age 23 in 1985 for allegedly uh, assaulting sexually a woman on a beach in, uh, what state is it? Oh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, served 18 years in prison before they figured out via DNA evidence that he didn't actually do it. Whoops. Yeah, whoops. Uh, he gets out. He starts. Oh, despite many, many appeals with damning evidence. Well, he could yeah, have gotten yeah. out to the after 10 years, but, you know, things just didn't go his way. And so they continued to not go his another way. Another 10 yeah. years later, he finally yeah. gets out uh, and sues the state and the, the local police department for wrongful arrest. Which, be- which, which he, uh, insurance would not cover, so they'd have to come out of pocket yeah. for, like, millions of dollars. And then, conveniently, he ends up. Getting arrested, again. getting arrested again by the murder. same sheriff's county. Yeah. And it's county uh, sheriffs. the actual like facts of the case are very confusing. Mm-hmm. It, none of it makes sense. But the, the only thing that the 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 biggest thing I get out of it is just seeing how easy it is for small town governments to just sort of get away with being really fucking shitty to people. Yeah, mm-hmm. just like if you have a town of it's like what, like three thousand people in Manitowoc? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like you, you're if you're a cop in that kind of town, you have any sort of power, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, 
and I'd... you can really screw people over. Well, so the thing is, is like the general consensus now after like kind of decompressing, watching it, seeing stuff online, you know, yes, there is a narrative being created by the filmmakers. Yeah. That's pretty obvious early on. But at the very least, it just shows how completely mismanaged and terrible like the judicial system is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, like yeah. so uh, who's the 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 what's the lawyer's name? Strang? Yeah. Uh great lawyer. Both yeah. lawyers. Those Both guys those are great. Guys. These guys are True Detective just, season 3. Yeah. Those guys uh-huh. right there. They're just great lawyers. Like uh, they they uh if you ever were in trouble, these are the kind of guys you'd want as defense attorneys. For hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars each, or whatever they cost. Um, but uh, Strang, like uh, the point that he keeps bringing up that I love is just he's just like presumed innocent until guilty. That's like a fundamental aspect of our yeah. legal yeah. system, and like no- nothing about this is being treated that way. Yeah, yeah, no. Like he's basically being presumed guilty. Yeah, the they, entire they, time they, they vilified him extremely. And and not even in the, on the local level, like in that entire state, this man was vilified to the point where there is no way he was going to get a fair trial. Yeah. And even today, as we record this, which is Tuesday, so who knows what's going to come out until this airs on Sunday. But even today, one of the jurors basically went public and said that I was intimidated into saying that he was guilty mm-hmm. yeah. during the trial. Not surprised. Not surprised. So felt felt uh, scared for... Uh, his or, I can't do it as a guy or a girl. Scared for his or her life. Well, I mean, like, whether Avery did it or not is almost inconsequential to whether the trial and investigation was done in an ethical way, because it wasn't. No, not at all. <laughs> it yeah. was done in just, like, the most shockingly biased, just incorrect way. Just piss poor. Yeah. yeah. Like, so many glaring uh, conflicts of interest w- with... You know, hey, this we did. We did an entire search of the property without the Manitowoc police. We came up with nothing. Four months later, we go back. Oh, there's all with these them, bullet cases with them, and then like turn yeah. a blind eye while all this evidence magically shows up. Yeah, it's just it's like, I mean, especially if he is guilty, I would want to have faith that the verdict was you know, delivered uh, in a in a way where. It's actually based on like no the truth. reasonable doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. like they added a bunch of unnecessary reasonable doubt to this case to the point where it's to, like we'll never fucking know. Yeah, what actually happened well, then they because of the, how uh, muddy the whole thing. They is. had the juror that was uh, sent home from the case because of a family emergency, mm-hmm. who was like basically saying that the jury was pretty much split. But there was people in it that no matter what the evidence, they even said like you know screw the evidence, he's guilty. It's kind of hard to do anything with those types of people. It's hard to bring them around to your side, yeah. regardless of the damning evidence that you could show them. Well, another big like point, I, I loved that. They, I loved how much they used Nancy Grace to illustrate this. But it was just like how much the fucking media yeah. just completely ruins cases like this before they even have a chance to go to trial. Yeah, yeah it's almost like it's a. a Evidence is brought forth in the media first, so that when it's brought to trial, it has no, this a like, trial of public opinion has, before it has, actual... has like this baggage coming yeah. into yeah. into it, like the Brendan Dassey press conference. Oh my god, that Ken, was insane. That's to me like that's yeah, the yeah. moment of of like where the document documentary went from like good to like holy shit is when Ken Kratz like has a press conference. Uh, revealing details, Brennan, everything Brennan that, yeah, like what he says, just the worst things that could ever happen to a human being. But the way he presents it is just like, okay, we got him. This is what yeah. happened. Case closed. Yeah, and then like, they go, go on home. to refute all of that. Yeah, evidence. exactly. Yeah. And and uh, you also find out that this Brennan Dassey, this you know mentally uh, challenged sixteen-year-old uh, uh, kid, was co- completely coerced oh, into yeah. his confession. Oh, yeah, and the and the wor- it's like the example of like coerced confession, and that they're like not a- like asking it's all him, yes or no, yeah, questions. yes or no questions. Yeah, they're they're leading him. The I entire- mean, the kid obviously has no grasp on reality at this point, and I wouldn't be surprised if before the cameras were rolling, they were like, hey, just you know. Tell us what you, what we need to know, and you'll be back at school. Yeah. yeah, like so he's just basically being coerced into saying this stuff because he thinks he's gonna go home after this. Well, and and they don't give a shit. He's like about him or his uncle. There's that phone call when he they're like, you need to call your mom and talk to her about this. And he calls his mom. He's like, I just wanted to let you know that like all these things happen. And she's like, Wait, Wait what? what? <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? He's like, Well, 
I mean, I mean, that's what I no, said, but they, like, they, they said that I should tell oh, you that this happened. And then he wrote, like, would write down a statement and be like, no, that's not your statement. Yeah. Write yeah. it again. It was, oh, it was just so mind blowing. Just like the way that it was mishandled, it was the most frustrating thing I've ever seen. And I love that it's taken the country and the and and the press by storm because, you know, it's actually good to show. You, like I said, this is all in spite of the fact that he might. Be guilty. Yeah. We're not saying that he's that's guilty the, or not guilty. That's the thing. Is like, I we're, mean, we're two, just showing the mishandling of justice in America. Yeah. The lawyer at the and there's two things. The lawyer at the end of the series. You guys didn't. I haven't. Made it to okay. The well, this isn't spoiling anything. But I got it. I mean, point, I know what. But I know what happens. So to him. At the, the the thing that really like the that still like I think about for this one. The I forget. It's the shorter lawyer. What's yeah. his name? The, 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 Strang. Strang. Yeah. He said. I really hope he's guilty because if he isn't, it's unfathomable like what this man has been through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's just it. it you can't, a human being can't begin to think about like the misery that this man has been through if he is not guilty. So like you hope for him to be guilty, and on top of that, if he's guilty. The cops did everything to prove him innocent by planting all this evidence, by by being yeah, shitty yeah, yeah. cops. Like, yeah. if he's guilty, they did a disservice to their department. And, like, they yeah. by doing all this weird shit that he could have actually gotten, be, like, became innocent or proven innocent because of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, so those two things alone, like, make this like, – that's it's just a, an amazing documentary to watch because w- watching this in, in, this injustice, like – it, it, and it's something that you know happens all the time oh, around yeah, America. Yeah. That's the thing too. It's like this is this is an anecdotal like uh, uh, um, this is anecdotal evidence of the of the overall problem we have with the justice system. But like you you know that in small towns around America, this happens. Well, you all, even all the see time. like so Stephen Avery, he used his settlement from his original false imprisonment to pay for the two best lawyers in the state of Wisconsin. His nephew, Brandon, oh, had a court-appointed public Lee defender. Kuchinsky. Who oh literally, God. the guy is basically just like working for the, the prosecution. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, I'm going to hand you to them on a silver platter. Yeah, yeah no, it just it shows how like the, the justice system just rewards itself with inequality. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh no, we're gonna make sure that this guy goes to jail. You could do literally do that to anyone. Someone yeah. could come and get you right now, and if you had not if you didn't have enough money to defend yourself, they could put you away for almost anything. Yeah. yeah. It's because it's a prison system with a court attached to it. It's not an actual well, and justice a, America's system. Prison system is for profit. That's the th- so. You know, yeah. that's the thing is they want these they they the, you know, these these cops and these these are the bad cops. I'm not talking about cops in general, but these bad cops, they think that they're like the arbiters of like who belongs in jail, who belongs they're, to be good citizens. So they look at the Avery family. They're, they're judged as like yeah. They look at the Avery family as like these are scum and they belong in jail. Let's do everything we can to put them in jail. Yeah. yeah. And this is not uh, something that just happens in Manitowoc County. It happens all the time, and yeah. unfortunately, it happens to a lot of young black men. Yeah. Uh, in this country, uh, so it just it's like I I it's, it's one of the only. Like things I've I I watched in uh, in a long time that I've just yeah, this screaming guy, th- like literally just screaming at the TV like oh my god and I cannot think about believe like, this is like, fucking and happening and this is just one case that just happened to be lucky enough to have documentary filmmakers follow for ten years yeah and it, think that's, about yeah. how yeah. much of this goes on every single day that's the thing too they, they got I mean the Avery family did get lucky in this in the sense I mean, they didn't get lucky obviously they're yeah, in, no, they're, 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 they're they got real bad luck the real but, end of the stick, like yeah. think about like so the story with these filmmakers is they were straight out of Columbia Film School and they just read a New York Times article about this story and they're like hey let's you know we just graduated let's we want to make a documentary let's just drive to Manitowoc County and they arrived like before he got arrested the second time like they were doing a documentary yeah. on him being released wow and they it was like before Thanksgiving around because it happened like November fifth or October thirty first is when yeah the Teresa, disappearance and they ha- they arrived like as he was getting arrested the second time <laughs> and they're like well this is gonna be our lives for the next like few years and they ha- and they, they were there for ten years they 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 went back and forth between New York and Manitowoc County for ten years filming this uh, documentary um, trying to f- probably find like that ending that yeah. they wanted yeah and they. It just never yeah. happened. That you, I watched this thing hoping there would be that like 
oh, like I want that there like so third many, act. Oh my god, this is this is great news moments in this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. almost coupled to the fact of just crippling depression. There was so many points where you're like. That's yeah. gonna be the thing that does it. Or like, this is gonna yeah, be the thing no, that, that does the, it. All that circumstantial evidence, like with the with the um the, the finding the need, the vials, blood. like yes, this is gonna be it. No, it means nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like oh. it's very depressing. Uh, the, I I also like as far as like hypotheticals go, there's so many times where I was watching it where I'm like, this girl's brother and ex boyfriend are up to something. The- <laughs> I, yeah. I know that you can frame anything and oh, edit the, anything uh, to make it look suspicious. Right, right, right. But I'm they real really that. do a good a job of making the brother and the ex boyfriend look really suspicious. Yeah. I, after serial season one, I'm very careful not to. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Armchair yeah. detective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've tried to stay away from that as much as possible, other than just. Enjoying it as a standalone documentary, although it is sucks that it's it, it it does suck that this is real life. Yeah. Because if this was a show and this was all made up, it would, it would be perfectly one of the best, cast. Yeah, it would have been one of the most the, amazing yeah. television. No, programs. but I agree with the brother. Like I just felt it was weird that he showed up to every trial, including Stephen Avery and, and Brendan Dassey. Very lucky press conference. Yeah. yeah, like he was clearly never like had, very voluntarily. Never had any doubt that was that it was anyone besides this guy. Yeah, yeah. almost yeah. to like to a fault. Where yeah, it's like really. You don't think it? You don't yeah. think it could be anyone else? But at the same time, he just lost his sister, so it's like yeah. I you, mean, don't you, don't know, act and, you don't know how people. You don't know. You don't know how people are in there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it also, the, this whole thing goes back to the fact that you can't. You have to take anything that is produced as a with a grain of salt. Oh, it's a story. There is it's storytelling. A, there yeah. is a narrative to it. Yeah. There is a a certain vo- viewpoint they're going for, and as mad as it makes you. And as angry as you can be with the Manitowoc Police Department and stuff like that, like this is completely one-sided. And I'm not saying that they didn't fuck it up because that's what been, we've been saying the whole time is that it was a complete mishandling of justice. Yeah. It was completely uh, just handled wrong by the police department. But on the same hand, he may or may not be guilty, and we're watching a completely one-sided viewpoint of the whole yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. It's, it's funny you bring that up and you, met, and you say Manitowoc Police Department. Have you heard about what's going on with their Twitter account? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, I've heard of, like, okay, yeah. so... There is there's a Manitowoc Police Department, but there's also the Sheriff's Department of Manitowoc, which right. are, who are the bad guys. The People have just been like inundating the Manitowoc Police Department Twitter account, yeah, like you guys department. are shitty, and they're like, "Whoa, we had nothing to do with this." Like yeah. it's the Sheriff's Department, so like I mean, I obviously like there are like, 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 whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. They're pushing the blame, like, <laughs> yeah, these guys, yeah. Like, I'm sure they're just, like, down the street from them, too. Like, I'm sure they're, like, see each other all the time. Like, oh, yeah. come on, guys. That's like, like when people hit us up on Twitter about machinima problems. Yeah. Like, it, we, just, we just make yeah. videos. It's very similar. <laughs> yeah. We sympathize with you guys. Although we didn't kill anyone. Or <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, do, I do think sheriff's departments generally are more corrupt. Like, the, the there's sheriff. More, uh, there's more latitude the for them The sheriff to be in Orange County when I was a kid is I think still in like federal prison oh, for wow. some like super shady. Well, and shit and didn't that he they did. do that thing? What was like four years ago or three years ago where they like killed that homeless man uh, that was just like mentally disabled? That was uh, that was the, the guy with the beard. That was the Fullerton. I don't know if that was the sheriff's department, but yeah, Orange County cops are uh, that the police systems down there are strange because like half the towns use the sheriff's department and half of them have their own PD. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's a whole mess of stuff. Yeah, so don't like. If you're angry at the documentary, don't go on the Manitowoc Police Department Twitter yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, no, it'll, right be, it'll be very interesting to see the fallout of this. Because it's only very recent that this has kind of taken the country by storm. I mean, they had the yeah. filmmakers on the Today Show this morning when I was watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the petition is going to the White House. because 200,000. Like 200, yeah, 250,000 yeah. now. That won't do anything. Yeah, I it won't do anything. It but, won't do anything. But it's, it's just, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out and you know the Adnan Syed thing is still happening yeah. he's getting his appeal and I I, I, I don't want to be cynical about it but I feel like it's the it's the flavor of the week uh, to, it, it, it sucks to say that because like you want to fight for Stephen Avery if, if you truly believe that he's innocent which mm-hmm. I do um, but like what what else can you do other than like that petition? Maybe write about it on Twitter. Yeah, you know, if they do a follow up documentary, make sure you're like aware of it and like you know, there's there's, there's so much you can do on like researching it. Mm-hmm. But like, I just feel I I, I always feel I like a, a sense ratings, of like what the Yelp ratings on the Avery uh, uh, car uh, lot are right now. They're probably oh, great. Well, you're, Ken Kratz got his uh his, the law firm Ken Kratz had his Yelp uh, just uh, to <laughs> and they had to, Yelp Yelp had to go in and like. 
Oh Google yeah, are they like shit. anonymous like doxed all those guys. Yeah, and, and that's that oh break. fuck anonymous. Like, okay, so Stop anonymous doxing. Anonymous everybody. like coming out and saying like, whoa, we have evidence uh, saying that like you know Avery's innocent, or they're like now using the like this is their new campaign. Like, no, you don't. It, go back no, to you ISIS. don't. Yeah, go back well, to ISIS. Like, anonymous like, uh, is they're not... getting a little irritating to me. Well, I mean, uh, talking about anonymous, it's like I think it's becoming more and more clear now just how loosely organized they <laughs> actually are. Yeah. Because, like, 2015 and I guess now have been, like, the years where it's just like, okay, so Anonymous is just doing all of these things and doing all of them poorly and, like, like ano different Anonymous Twitter accounts are having fights with each other on yeah. Twitter about whether things are, like, worth their time and shit. Yeah. So it's just, like, it's becoming very clear. It's, like, when you talk about anonymous you're not talking about one like monolithic group of people it was the same problem with uh, occupy wall street there was no central like leadership yeah, no so yeah, there like no, there yeah. yeah so like the people like the occupy wall street movement in la could be mad at the occupy wall street movement in New that's York. actually like um uh, ghost sec the uh the hacking group that specifically targets like uh social media accounts of of uh like extremist terrorist sort of people, they were originally, like, part of Anonymous, and they, like, completely removed any mm. ties to Anonymous. They're like, no, yeah. we're an actual, we're an actual, like, group. You can't, can't yeah, just yeah. put on a Guy Fox mask and be a part <laughs> of us. Like, yeah. we have a whole system in place where we have contacts, like, within the government that we share information with. Like, yeah. we got this. Yeah. yeah. You keep up with that anonymous shit over there. All right. Well, so the, to put a pin in the making a murderer thing, it is an incredible documentary no matter where you stand on yeah. the issue. And it really does shine a light on the mismanagement uh, in the United States judicial system and uh, shows that corrupt things can happen because even if you – disregard the entire murder trial there's still the wrongful yeah. imprisonment of him for an assault where a person was actually on the loose because they got yeah. him and continued to sexually assault people i think yeah. it's i think it's really important uh, if you're interested in this stuff to watch it um if when you finish it there's so many others to watch there's the staircase if you haven't seen serial and jinx obviously the staircase? Yeah. the staircase is like from like 10 years ago from this french filmmaker it's a kind of a similar case it's a but it's a it's a uh, husband being wrongfully accused of murdering his wife, mm. who was found dead at the bottom of the staircase, and mm. his uh, you know he basically claimed that she just fell down the staircase, but there were some bruises that were more in line with mm. like a beating, mm. uh, and wow. he was proven like he was proven guilty in court, but you know all the evidence, oh well you're gonna have uh, the People yeah. versus OJ Simpson coming out real soon on FX <laughs> oh, oh boy. baby <laughs> no that's the, that's like uh, okay it's the opposite of this opposite. Case. Uh, but no, no. Uh, so know. the good news is, is that if anyone uses data and success to make more shows, it's Netflix. So I think that yeah. they're going to have their eyes on a lot more uh, uh, documentaries coming out of uh, you know filmmakers in the next uh, couple of months. Netflix yeah. has always had pretty strong catalogs of documentaries, like consistently. Well, yeah. I'm glad to see that this is a this is a good Netflix original, and then I think yeah. that this, the success of this will, you know, I think that they'll have someone. Uh, or a group of people going out to being like, all right, let's see what kind of documentaries are being produced by these well, this independent one, like, filmmakers. This was it. I, what's cool is like, yeah, this one was already being it was produced being made, yeah, long yeah. before Netflix Instant was even uh, a, a, a thing. Yeah. yeah, and Netflix was smart enough that when, or or the filmmakers, or both, were smart enough when actual distribution for this was becoming uh, something they needed to worry about. That like it, Netflix managed to get it. Yeah, because apparently HBO turned it down. Wow! But apparently, HBO turned it down after HBO they made a, they turns made a, a uh, lot of stuff down. Yeah, it, they they originally cut a two hour movie uh, uh, in like two thousand seven or eight or about. Oh wow! It. So, I'd love to watch that. So uh, they, they turned it down, and and so they didn't even like when they were conceiving this like long form documentary. There wasn't even a platform for it to be put on. Who in two thousand eight bought or bought or watched true ten crime, hour true crime yeah. documentaries? No yeah, one. Yeah, there isn't. But really, I can't think of any other like. 10 hour oh no you can watch a 10 hour marathon of forensic files but that's not <laughs> like that's not no. serious I mean like that one I just mentioned <laughs> the, the staircase was released on iTunes because that was the only place yeah. for it to be released yeah. hopefully well, it'll, it'll, be on, it'll go on I think no, staircase this is, should be uh, on Netflix this is, this is great this is a, a great sign for future documentary from independent filmmakers going to a platform net, like Netflix and yeah. thank god it exists it's great Yep. yeah, yeah. well it's, it's like 
not only that it exists and it has a platform, but like Netflix was smart enough to know how to market it and like yeah. get people to watch and, it and, and and release it at the most opportune time, which yeah, is when everyone do. has a ton of time. Yeah, exactly. Like this could have just as easily been released on like Showtime or Cinemax or something like that and been Nobody just would have seen not it. even a blip on the radar. Well, that's no. the thing is you can be like, hey, have you seen Making a Murder? No, what's that? It's on Netflix. It's literally the cool. first. It, yeah, like, yeah. When you sign Everyone Netflix, has Netflix. It's yeah. the first yeah. thing that shows up. Yeah. No, so. they, they've gone to the point where I, I any, anytime, anytime they release something new, because it's Netflix, I, I, there's a quality I gotta feel. Like I feel. Oh, okay. Okay. God. All right, no, sounds good. Keep, so um, here. Get, get to the next question. Oh, we can we can <laughs> we can we can cut this. All right. Well, I guess we could we should do this one since it won't be uh, timely in the next episode. So, uh, this question comes from Achuman Achuman ninety six. Uh, what tech do you think will be huge in twenty sixteen? For example, uh, SpaceX's successes in rocket launching at the end of twenty fifteen. And I still say VR. I think VR is going to be the twenty sixteen tech. They're product pushing real hard. By the end of it. I mean, I think. Um... Yeah, I think this will be a transitional year again. For I don't, I don't think this will be the year for VR, because um, I think by Christmas, by Christmas, by Christmas, there's only going to be two products out by Christmas. No, I, there's going to be the View, the Vive, and the and uh, the, Sony, uh, and Sony, or the the the, the, Vive, the VR, Sony VR, Sony yeah. VR, and then uh, Oculus. I think Sony, yeah. and there's already so, Samsung, so, so and I, I played with it at Best Buy. It's cool if you own a Samsung phone. I'd Get it? Yeah, I still think right. it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna move the needle though. I don't know. Oh, Sony's, God. I think, got a pretty good plan in place. They were very smart to try to come up with an actual slate of launch titles that cover a variety of genres, but are all sort of very easily presentable. Like they're very simple game yeah. concepts, so it's easy to be like, no, "Here's I'm the excited. shooting game. I, I Here's got, the racing I a, game." I got a PS4 for Christmas, and my immediate thought when I unwrapped it is, "Yes." Now I can just go buy the Sony VR when it comes out, and I don't have to build a right off the bat go and build an Oculus rig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I can dip I'm my toes in VR with PlayStation. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, like the the coolest thing that I like about it that works the best so far is very simple, and it's I would take if I had the Samsung phone and stuff like that, I would wear it on a flight because you the movie theater mode where you're sitting in a theater and it makes the screen. Yeah, I'm telling you, it makes you feel like the screen is 90 feet tall. Bad and for your eyes, a, though. Yeah, yeah, it's just not. Like we're experience. all gonna have to adapt yeah. to. <laughs> it's not. The it's not an experience that I want, uh, especially on a flight where I don't want to just be closed. Oh, I want to be zoned out. Don't uh, yeah, even I, talk to me. I I don't think that's a that's something that a lot of people are gonna be seeing. Although yeah. I, I think it'll be hilarious. On a flight this yeah. yeah, I think it'll be very hilarious. Like uh, the first time that someone has a like falls asleep while they're doing some kind of VR experience on a flight, and like. Like someone wakes them up so they can go to the bathroom, and they wake up in VR, and they're just completely freaked the fuck out. <laughs> oh my god, there's monsters everywhere! I mean, like, so, like I said, I played probably 35 hours of Fallout over our Christmas break, uh, but I was usually doing it. I was playing on my PC. My girlfriend was playing her Fallout playthrough on Xbox, so we'd be in the same room, and we'd go for like. <laughs> Sometimes eight hours straight oh, before, wow, like, wow. okay, let's let's go see a movie, get some dinner. <laughs> but like, she would be like, oh god, like I, like I feel like I'm still in the game, like it's yeah. weird. I'm like, you just wait until fucking VR comes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's gonna be the most Someone disorienting made a, thing a, a ever. Mod for VR, so you could play it, or for Fallout, so you could play it in VR, which it would just be insane. Yeah, it would it's be, too too much. Yeah, death when claws I sit, and shit. When I have to charge my controller, so I have to sit next to the TV to <laughs> play it, it is like fully enveloped. I'm like. You know what? This is actually awesome, but also I can't imagine this in VR. It'll be crazy. Your yeah. eye, you humans are going to have to evolve their eyeballs to be stuck in oh, VR. Oh yeah, we're we're ruining our species. Oh yeah, uh, our eyes are gonna be fucked. Our our backs and yeah. our like fingers are all gonna be fucked. What do you What do you think about? I mean, well, obviously well, you guys, you're gonna go you, SpaceX. You know, no, no, I don't think it's SpaceX. Um, you guys know my opinions on VR, obviously. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's I don't think it's gonna take off in 2016. Maddie is a um, sick. I, yeah. I think it's gonna. I think the th- the three products that are coming out this year are just gonna maybe sell like hundreds in the hundreds of thousands of units. Maybe. What do you think is gonna be the, the, the big one? Um, well, I mean, we got CES going right on now. right now. CES and it's, is it's all the, about it's, cars, it's, it's, and I, that's why I think cars, I think yeah. that car tech will make the huge leap in 2016. Uh, it's kind of the uh, that like space that hasn't really like. Had that aggressive tech, like consumer 
Like uh, uh, it's been uh, mostly connected uh, home for the past like two years. I mean, it's, I, think I, I mean, I remember going to, to yeah, I remember going yeah. to like CES in like 2009 and it was still connected home shit. Yeah. I think connected home like you'll be every year there'll be like a fan with Wi-Fi or some bullshit. Yeah. Like oh yeah, you control your AC from your phone. I'm like well, why don't I just walk over there? It's, it's yeah, dumb. so you can but, do it so, when you're at work, so it gets home. Yeah, like, I, 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 I get it. Yeah, I get it's, it. It's, it's dumb to me. Uh, I think autonomous <laughs> cars. I think semi-autonomous cars will be like on the road. Yep. Uh, I mean, there's already the Tesla models on the road, but I think that you're gonna see um, at like I don't know when is like the Detroit Auto Show. Is that like the, no? Uh, they don't do that. Yet. The companies are already saying that they don't premiere stuff at the auto shows anymore. That CES is the new auto show. Well, the auto shows are more for showing off. Much more kind like of like concept cars and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, which I think concept cars are fucking stupid, but yeah. um, I mean, we can all agree on that, yeah. Uh, everything looks like the home, but yeah. like, <laughs> so I, if there, I think there is like some, some, uh, like a high ceiling there for like cars to, I don't know, get updated some way. Like, I mean, think about like each of us, like, have like you know, pretty recent cars, like, I have yeah. a Prius, you just bought a new car, you have a pretty recent car, like, yeah. our dash, the dashboard isn't. Nearly as good as like what do you have on your phone, you yeah. know? No, it's and like the like, Tesla has basically an iPad in the middle of it. And that's great. Yeah, like yeah. I think that's the, there's an opportunity there. Like we have a screen already in our cars for that. Like I mean, Android plays looks awesome. Well, I mean, coming coming um, from uh, Android Auto looks awesome. Coming from uh, my girlfriend had like a 2004 or five Mazda. Hmm. Coming from that, which had like no aux port even. Yeah. Just a CD player and like radio, yeah. to being able to like to Bluetooth get, getting into the because I have a Corolla now yeah. getting into the Corolla and having my phone auto sync to it and yeah start yeah playing Spotify it's a huge like, difference yeah. yeah so I think I, I mean Bluetooth I, I've I've like upgraded like I use like Bluetooth headphones Bluetooth on my car like that's just amazing to me that like we finally have gotten to, Bluetooth is so good that like it just can like sync up to your stuff so easily now yeah yeah and I feel like now it's like. Okay, I want to see that upgrade to like video. So like, if I'm watching a clip on YouTube, I want to be able to airplay it to like whatever screen I have in my car. If I'm just waiting, maybe like in the car, I can watch something on my car TV. Play. Yeah, um, that would be amazing. Uh, obviously, like semi-autonomous driving would be amazing. There's that video that Volvo put Volvo's out. Volvo's going after this shit pretty damn yeah, aggressively. They want you to like oh, watch they Netflix. They better to save their name. Uh, that video is ruining those emissions test. No, that was Volkswagen. That's Volkswagen. Oh. Yeah, well, Volvo is Volvo. Swedish, and they're doing yeah. just fine. They want yeah. you like they want like full on like have like a screen pop out. Yeah, and like your, play your car Netflix. goes into like leisure mode, and it's and around. like a laptop dot comes up, and you can like go on your laptop. That's that's like maybe twenty years. Out. Like, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But I think that um, media consumption in in their cars too. Basically, at this point, have always just been like podcasts, like audiobooks. I think there's like a, a next leap there to uh, maybe it's like screens on your dashboard. I don't, I mean, or on your like windshield. I've seen cars that are like have these really cool like HUDs, HUD systems on your on your uh, yeah, uh, windshield. Yeah. That have your, I like, think Mercedes has that. Yeah, and that stuff is like awesome. So, uh, um, and I'm not so a car, car I'm, tech. Car yeah, tech. and I'm yeah. not a car guy, so I don't really care about that. But I think that is cool. Like, like it's every, every like we need to see updates for all these things. I would love for like cable boxes to be updated, but that's just like a whole like political mess. I feel like, you know between the cable companies and with cars, it's now like I feel like a lot of these companies are now like, oh, now we can like have products that people actually want in their cars that like sync up yeah. to Bluetooth, like sync up to these things that they want rather than like you know having a CD player or like a aux port. Yeah. One of the CES like that. things I saw really as relates to cars that I thought was pretty cool is like more companies are uh, installing these uh, camera systems that it's basically taking what you already have with your like going in reverse camera but putting one on each side with like a 180 uh, degree yeah. view range mm -hmm. and so it basically creates a uh, 360 degree always on dash cam yeah oh, so yeah, anytime yeah. you get in a car accident your insurance company will get a full like, yeah fully yeah, they already have, the, they already have a thing degree. that you plug into your car's computer that tracks like everything and yeah yeah, yeah. So there's gonna be way more stuff like that which hopefully will bring down like Insurance rates and stuff like that. Unless you're a shithead. Well, yeah, but then <laughs> then you're fucked. Yeah, I'll, people I'll just, are gonna be like, no, I'll take the car. I'll take uh, Maybe we gotta turn those off. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. What do you think, Elliot, for big tech? I mean, the car stuff. I guess like, uh, pfft. car yeah. stuff's just so expensive. 
yes, I think it's going to be a developed thing, but it's so expensive that uh, n- not a lot of consumers are going to be able to well, ad- no, adopt it. it I, I, I mean, exactly, I've, but I think it's it's a, it's going to be a big year where all of these car companies are coming out with these new things, and they're going to have a little burst of uh, extreme competition that yeah. moves yeah, yeah. the whole no, industry the car, forward. The, the space race. That's the thing. Yeah. Like like comparing like you know to like with VR, which is a completely new thing. Yeah, with with cars, you have a you have a industry that's been there for like 100 years with it's highly competitive and the the technology i feel trickles down like you'll see something in mercedes that in five years we'll see it in corolla oh yeah yeah like i i feel with a lot of other technology it's hard f- to really like see the landscape of like okay like this is an amazing thing that's really expensive but is it really going to translate to like an everyday user like that's what that's my problem with vr like i think that it's going to start off expensive and yes it might get to a price point like the the samsung vr is already 99 dollars yeah but do like do that's because it's part of the actual hardware. It's literally yeah. right. But like, more a lot. I mean, Samsung phones are the hottest selling phones. Like so, that's a that's a huge install base, and I don't I don't hear anyone talking about buying a Samsung Gear well, it's VR. Not, it's not. It, it just went on sale in Best Buy. So I, we'll see. I don't. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. All like right. you know, biggest new tech: vinyl records. Vinyl yes. records. Well, there you go. According to Amazon. You know what yeah. I'm waiting to buy because it comes out in. Uh, Cause I have a Best Buy gift card, that's why I keep mentioning Best Buy. But I, th- when it comes out in a couple of days, I'm going to get one of those little, uh, uh, they're like little tiles that you stick to stuff that you lose all the time. Oh. And you can hang it to your keys yeah. and find oh, your keys. Okay. Because my girlfriend loses her wallet every single. How does day. that work though? Is it like is it like the thing in Alien where it starts beeping faster and faster? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's blu- it's Bluetooth based, so you have to be within like a hundred feet of it. So it has to be somewhere oh, okay. based, basically in your house. Does it chirp? But like, how do you find it? I think it's a little sensor that lights up the closer that. You oh, get. so it is like the thing from Alien. Yeah, yeah. cool. It's like the thing That's that they cool. hunt ghosts with in Ghostbusters. Yeah, I'm gonna like just leave out bait for like a rat and then shoot. Shoot one onto a rat, like a little, a little what? A little tracker onto a rat, and oh, then track oh. the rat through my house. You have rats in your house? Well, first of all, if you have to find the rat, yeah. you'd have to find the rat. Why didn't you just trap the rat then? Because it'd be cool to see how they get around. It'd be like a <laughs> science. Well, sure, there's patterns. already scientists that have done this. <laughs> I just want to see how they get around. You'll learn about the nest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are they? Where are they nesting from? Yeah. Behind one of then, your, that's how you take out all posters. Of them. Yeah. That's what they. That's what they're all. <laughs> no, I don't have rats. I had I had one mouse about a year and a half ago. And you killing, gotta get the hell out of that house. I killed him, but I felt really <laughs> bad afterwards because I used a rat trap and it just destroyed him. Yeah, well, it was, was like one instant. of the enemies in it was Fallout. Probably it just exploded. <laughs> it was a real mess. Yeah, move into a place with like sealed windows. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Literally, most of the apartments in LA are just wood that connects. Like, just there's no seal on it. Oh, I had a, I had wood. like a big ant problem like three years ago, and I bought some like uh, leave the house. I bought caulk, and I caulked the entire apartment over the course of like a month. Like, anytime I'd see a crack, I'd be like, <laughs> "Here we go." <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have ants ever again. You're never gonna get your deposit back. Uh, well, actually, technically, after like two and a half years, they. They can't charge you for uh, certain cosmetic uh, problems. With the I apartment. like how you've done more effort into look into the legality of them charging for your deposit. <laughs> literally, just, finding a new place to live. You just Google it. Like, <laughs> every, sucks, everyone everyone that complains, terrible. everyone yeah, always complains. Like, terrible. oh, they charged me for like my carpet. It's like, well, that's because you didn't live there for more than a year. Yeah, just don't move as much. They they can't charge you for the carpet after two years. Yeah, at least not in the city of LA. Well, they can't I, charge I you for pain after that. Long. And I told them how much I love my place and that we don't want to leave. So hopefully I can get some more years out of him. Yes. Yes. He actually complimented me on how nice the place looked, by the way. Great feather paintings. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, what, what was that, Armenian or something? Yeah, I assume every landlord is Armenian. No, he's like a white surfer dude. You know what, though? I've had six landlords. Five of them were Armenian. Yeah. See, it's, it's, it's based on fact. Mountains of evidence. Empirical evidence. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's it for the podcast this week. Go watch Making a Murderer and uh, buy VR so we can prove Maddie wrong. Yeah, and send us questions at our subreddit. Everyone buy three Oculuses. Yeah, no one's going to buy it. Yeah, send uh, send questions to our Reddit. There's a thing on top where you can submit, and we'll see you guys next time. (laughs) 